Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Dr. G. N. Ramesh. I am a medical gastroenterologist and a lead consultant in medical gastroenterology at Astor Med City, Kochi. What is the evidence which, which backs these dietary modifications? If we go into the guidelines and the scientific literature, the evidence that connects dietary advice to response to medical therapy of uh, GERD is actually quite weak. But even then, we would say that along with the lifestyle modification, the patient has to stop smoking, reduce or stop his consumption of alcohol, reduce caffeine intake, citrus fruits I did mention, mint or spicy foods also sometimes leads to problems. So therefore, avoidance of these may lead to improvement in symptoms. Weight management, weight reduction, as I mentioned a little while ago, is the, probably one of the cornerstones. Come what may, however the patient does it, a weight reduction of, to the tune of a BMI reduction of 3.5 or more, or a weight reduction of more than 40% has been found to actually reduce the frequency of reflux episodes. And probably the best thing which the patient can do along with dietary modification is weight reduction. The time duration between the patient's meal and going to bed is also important. It is a common practice, especially in our country, that we tend to have late dinner, which is probably the worst as far as GERD is concerned. So therefore, we always say that patients who are very symptomatic should have food about three hours prior to bedtime and elevate the head end of the bed. Some people also do report good relief if they avoid the right lateral decubitus position in bed. Now, most of my patients would probably be on PPIs from the very beginning itself. But there are a, there is a small segment of patients who have what we call as nocturnal reflux. So it may be, it may make sense to give an additional dose of PPIs at bedtime. So therefore, if you look at the medical therapy, the most important steps, which I did mention the four pillars, you must never forget. But in the first two pillars, are the lifestyle modification and PPIs. So lifestyle modification ensure that the patient is complying with treatment. There are interesting studies which say that around 60 to 70 percent of people who do not respond to medical th therapy, they do not respond because their compliance with PPI therapy has not been adequate or ideal. Either they don't take it daily or they take the PPI with food or after food. Remember, the PPIs are best taken half an hour before food. Sometimes if the patient is not in, uh, feeling good with one dose of PPI, as I said, it makes much more sense to give an additional dose, what we call as splitting the dose of PPI. If one PPI does not work, switch to another PPI. But across the board, PPIs are considered the most effective medical therapy for GERD 
due to their profound and consistent acid suppression over 24 hours. Not only that, PPIs have got a very good safety profile and also demonstrate different levels of satisfaction that range from almost 60% to 100% as compared with other anti-reflux medications. The overall rate of symptomatic relief of PPIs in patients with normal endoscope non-erosive reflux disorder patients has been shown to reach about 51%. PPI therapy is better when compared to a combination of H2 receptor antagonists and prokinetics.